one of the things I see business owners say all the time is they'll say, this has been Florida and Oklahoma, Colorado, all over the country. They'll say, I just feel like people, my employees feel like I'm too demanding because I freak out if something's left in the hallway or if the bathroom mm -hmm. isn't cleaned. And I yeah. tell people, if you're an entrepreneur and you're going to be successful, you're not, you have to run at a different clip. And I've never articulated as well as you have here. But what advice would you have, would you have for the typical small business owner that uh, maybe runs a, a convenience store and, and, and they're just not being fastidious about those details? What would you, what would you say to them? Well, first of all, I have a couple things. I, I wrote a book about this called Broken Windows, Broken Business. Yeah. That is about how the little things matter a lot. And yep. I would commend it to you. I think it's an important book on this topic. But look, a business owner says, Clay, 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 my goodness gracious, my team thinks I'm too demanding. You got the wrong team. It's so ultimately the goal of any, you say in your book here, ultimately the goal of any public relations campaign is to either reiterate or solidify the perception of a product, client, policy, or event. From there, nature takes its course. If the public perceives the product is good, the movie stars as sexy, the pet rock is indispensable, then the public will fork over its money. In your mind, how could the public's perception of a product or service affect the value of the actual product? So again, I'm going back to my main well, manager. Well, no, you had an iPhone on you, son? I have a Samsung 4. Okay. Well, most people in America buy those iPhones because they like that Apple logo because they yeah. have an emotional relationship with it. Yeah. Say so they got a Mac computer because they like the emotional relationship with it. You see, it's an interesting thing when people buy cars. You know, it's really funny. You go in and you say, why, you know, you want a car with good gas mileage? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I really do. I got to get good gas mileage. In the end, you know what makes their decision about what car they purchase? Give it to me. Is the cup holder big enough? Really? Let, let me ask you this real quick. Let's break it down to the most simple level. Let's pretend we're going, we're going old school here, okay? And let's just say in this weird twist of events, there's a guy, he's got a, a business, and he uh, is an air conditioning business. An air conditioning business, and he's in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And he just heard what we're talking about, about gift wrapping and, and the perception. How could the average air conditioning business owner gift wrap his business to make the higher the, the value perceived to be higher well by finding out what his customers want and give it to them and give it to them in the way they want do you think that the branding the logo the website all those things let me will tell you something about most air conditioning people or more carpet cleaners i don't know clay you ever had your carpets cleaned yeah yeah okay you had your carpets cleaned yeah. great now after they were after the carpet company came and cleaned your carpets and you paid them yeah they ever call you or write you? Uh, they ever uh, write you a thank you note? This particular company, no. Okay, no, they don't. They don't do anything. They do nothing. This is so. Now we're talking to Mr. Air Conditioning Guy. Now, Mr. Air Conditioning Guy. Let's say his name's Todd. Todd, let, let me tell you something, buddy. You got some good news. Your competition. You're working in America in the early part of the 21st century. Here's your good news, Todd. Your competition's stupid and lazy. They're going to do nothing, Todd. Nothing. Nothing. Because they're trying to figure out how to get out of work. Okay? Right. So if you do everything that your competitors do, and one more thing, you're going to win. Now you're going to say, okay, Michael, what's one more thing? It doesn't matter. Just do one more Exceed thing. their expectations. Exceed their expectations, which are pretty minimal since most people do nothing. Have you ever read Think and Grow Rich by I Napoleon have, Hill? I have. So you believe in this concept of over-deliver? I do. And, and yeah, of course I believe The reason why I'm asking is I, I named my son after this guy. So my son's name is Aubrey Napoleon Hill Clark. And mm -hmm. that's sort of our trademark in our business is to try to exceed expectations. There it's amazing go. how the world will line up to pay you when you just do a little bit more than they ask for. And, and remember, that book was written at a time yeah. in which Americans were not suffering from this the current disease, which is the disease of laziness. They don't want to do anything. Yeah. They just don't. They want to figure out every possible way to do as little as possible.